you um, ready? Uh, yes, I think so. Okay, so I'll just give a quick introduction. Um, so everybody, uh, I'm really pleased to introduce Helen Moore of um, Hikurangi School in Northland. Um, and she, uh, from what I read, you're on the edge of the Hikurangi Swamp. And that swamp has been progressively drained over the years, uh, which res has resulted in the um, in, in the sort of um, elimination of the habitat of um, some of the local native species and threatening the survival of, uh, among others, the Waikaka or local black mudfish. And um, Helen's class got involved in investigations um, and action to protect the mudfish and its habitat and have twice presented uh, their work to Parliament. And so Helen is going to tell us the story um, and it's relevant to us um, as far as the participating and contrib contributing substrand of NOS is um, concerned. So Helen, if you're ready to go, it's all yours. Okay, my friend. Thank, thank you, Michael. Good on uh, you. Kia ora ko Helen Moore Aho. Um, I'll just give you um, a bit of background first, just um, before I show you my fabulous slideshow. Um, I teach the year seven, eight senior girls class at Hikarangi School in Northland. So we are a, uh, a small rural Desol 2 school, uh, about 200 there uh, on our roll, and we're not far from Whangarei. Uh, we're full primary and we also have um, uh, two rumaki classes. I've been teaching for um, 10 years and um, love the way that the science makes the teaching easy and the learning fun. Okay, so now I'm going to attempt to share the screen and do the slideshow. Okay. <clears throat> right. Now, where, where do I get my slideshow? Here we go. Is that working? Can someone please tell me if it's not? It is working. Oh, good. Thanks. Oh, excellent. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay, so in 2018, um, I was lucky enough to be a participant on the Science Teaching Leadership Programme, which I think most of you are on now, um, run by the Royal Society of New Zealand, Te Aparangi. So uh, in this programme, you are placed in a science environment for six months, so you get this amazing opportunity to see how science and scientists work in real context unless COVID-19 comes along, puts a spoke in the wheels. Um, so my placement was with the Northern Regional Council and it was there that I was um, <clears throat> introduced to our native freshwater fish. Um, but ashamed to say that I was really completely ignorant of the number and the variety of these little critters that we have in New Zealand, except for um, the tuna and the inanga. So here we have a little torrent fish and came across some amazingly massive tuna. Um, now it was while I was helping with these fish surveys um, that I learned that the majority of these species were really under threat. And even more mind blowing was the fact that they had no uh, real protection under our environmental laws. So the seed was kind of planted there that maybe um, there was, this was something we could look at and perhaps raise awareness about. So um, we, uh, when I got the girls class back last year, um, we talked about how we could affect this change. Um, we came up with the idea of a petition to government and then leading off from that, why not take it down to Parliament in person and um, follow the process right to the end? Easy as that. Nothing could possibly go wrong. Okay, so the focus of this webinar tonight is to show how our mudfish journey 
um, ties into the nature science strand, participating and contributing. Basically, the strand is about teaching our students <clears throat> how to bring a scientific perspective or thinking to decisions that um, which they may need to make in the future. If we can teach them now how their voices matter, um, then just maybe as adults, they'll be um, more confident enough to tackle uh, issues that they feel strongly about. Okay, so the capability which aligns with the strand engaging as science is the toolbox that we use to our to equip our ta tamariki with the skills skills that they need to be able to um, one take interest become interested in issues which affect them to participate in discussions about these issues and three take informed actions if needed what we found out through the operation mudfish was that the strand uses all the other capabilities as well. Um, and I will just quickly show you a couple of things that you may have seen. So here we have, uh, this infographic has been um, kind of my Bible since, I, since the STLP that I went on, um, showing how the nature of science encompasses everything um, with the substrands, up here, the capabilities which teach us how to teach the substrands here and the contextual strands here. And I also have, courtesy of the fabulous Bridget Gasson, Glasson, the, um, the same thing, infomercial, but a kind of jazzed up version that she's done, which um, Donna showed me, and I think it's is pretty cool as well. So it just shows us that um, you know, the nature of science is for everything, really. Um, now, with that in mind, I'm going to present this as how the girls use the capabilities as they um, relate to participating, participating and contributing. And that also pretty much fits neatly into the chronology of, of our journey as well. Um, in all of this, we were kind of flying by the seat of our pants, um, but the further we went, the more the pathway became clearer. So my advice to you is um, just pick a starting point and dive in. Okay, we began as every scientist does by gathering data. This is probably uh, the capability most familiar to all of you, and it generally involves observing and measuring something. Uh, in this context, it was a bit different as it was um, predominantly research-based. This means uh, we did heaps of work around developing uh, skills. Uh, we have had uh, digital classes at Hikarangi for about five years, but the concept of research as a scientific skill can be difficult for students. We talked about uh, triangulating data, using different sources for the same information to make sure that it was robust. It was massive for literacy, a huge block of time spent learning to uh, look for keywords and summarising. So I gathered resources from school journals, um, DOC, Landcare, Science Learning Hub, newspapers, and the New Zealand uh, Native Freshwater Fish Group on Facebook was very good as well. Originally, we were going to focus on all of our nat fr Native Freshwater Fish, um, <clears throat> but as we researched, we came across mudfish, and then our own black mudfish in the Hikarangi Swamp. So we decided to change our focus, and it instantly became um, way more relevant to the girls, as well as to the school and the local communities. Uh, we also used experts um, and found people more than ready to help. Different people I had connected with at the, um, at the regional council gave access to uh, information and their, and their own knowledge and other contacts that we could use. Uh, because <laughs> there is only one degree of separation in Northland, 
my sister knew someone who knew someone who had done um, their undergrad study on the black mudfish and in the Hika swamp. And that was how we, um, Nina came all the way from uh, Kaitaia to uh, talk to us. And she was, uh, her help was really valuable. And it was really good because it showed um, how scientists work together, sharing knowledge and encouraging others, or us, in their work. Um, we also had a little bit of contact with Dr. Mike Joy through emails. Um, so he's at Victoria University in, in Wellington um, and quite passionate about, about the um, fate of our freshwater fish and um, went to a presentation that he was at as well. And that was really helpful. Um, we researched famous petitions, mostly uh, women's suffrage, which the girls found pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> you know, New Zealand leads the way once again, and we made sure we went to um, see the suffrage petition when we were in Wellington. Um, we found this timeline up here uh, pretty amazing, a bit of an eye opener because it shows that um, Swiss women didn't get the right to vote until 1971. So, food for thought there. Um, this was also when we made our first contact with Willow Jean Prime. She's our political expert. She was awesome. You know, she was happy to come and talk to the class. And she even um, Skyped us from Australia. Um, I chose Willow as the MP to present our petition because I felt that she would relate really well to the girls as a young Māori woman from a, also from a rural Northland background. And uh, she was also pretty excited about this because it was the first petition that she would accept as an MP. Uh, so I've put these next two uh, capabilities together as I found them pretty much inseparable in, the, in this context. Um, <clears throat> we now had to use the data we'd collected to put our petition together. The girls worked in pairs uh, to look at all their research and decide what information was going to be most relevant for their purpose. We had decided to post the petition on the change.org um, platform in both written and, and video form, you know, so it could appeal to a wider audience. Um, which meant that the girls had to decide what was the most relevant evidence to share in a, in a short time frame. One of the biggest issues I could see was around the sensitivity of our farming community. Um, how it was feeling when it, when it comes to issues of freshwater, stream quality and swampland drainage. So we made sure that we researched thoroughly <clears throat> and we were really careful in our wording to include other human activities which had also contributed to habitat loss. So um, critiquing, so developing the skills and the confidence to ask questions for clarification as part of critiquing evidence was a huge challenge. And there were times when I thought we would never get there. But the secret I think is to keep practicing even through the eye rolls and the heavy sighs and continue making the, the capability explicit as part of what scientists do. We spent time um, learning about higher order questioning um, and before our visiting experts such as Willow, Jean and Doc uh, came, we would brainstorm questions we thought we might need the answers to. <clears throat> um, when it came to communicating or representing ideas, we found that the media was really happy to help with this. Um, we very quickly got quite a lot of media coverage. Um, <clears throat> we had articles in these uh, Education HQ, which is an Australian and New Zealand um, 
magazine, uh, e magazine, um, the New Zealand Herald, our local Northern Advocate, um, the Te Tai Taikoro Trust, Education Trust. Um, you know, they all did articles on the girls. Um, by this time, the girls were um, really, really um, confident in their ability to talk about mudfish and what we were doing with the petition. <clears throat> so using uh, cause and effect language, um, context specific words and scientific vocabulary was becoming um, much easier for them. And throughout the process, um, <clears throat> at various parts, the girls use Flipgrid as a way of increasing their oral language skills and their confidence when talking to the media. Okay, so after all of this, the final uh, taking action capability just kind of flowed really. Uh, the petition was made public and got over 650 signatures with lots of encouraging comments from all over New Zealand um, and a few from overseas as well. Willow Jean's secretaries in uh, Kawakawa and Wellington, they were really helpful with the admin parts, filling in bits of paper, seemed to be lots of bits of paper to fill in, and organising the handover of the petition in front of Parliament. Uh, so this is it, the actual handing over part was kind of quite an event it turned out. Um, <clears throat> as well as Willow Jean, there was Eugenie Sage, uh, the Associate Minister of the Environment, and Duncan Webb, the MP and he's the Chairman of the Environmental Select Committee. I was really impressed with the interest that the politicians showed in what the girls had done and what they had to say. You know, they asked, um, Eugenie Sage especially, asked lots of questions, and um, I was really proud of the conversations that the girls were able to, to engage in. And she was always interested in what they had to say. Um, we were then able to go with Willow Jean to the tables office to give them the petition so they could get it ready to be read out the next day. Uh, oh, um, <clears throat> Trevor Mallard had been down in the grounds just before the handover to check on his playground, um, which was going to be open the next day. I think I saw it in the news last night. And he also asked about the petition and then invited us to go and have a look around his offices, which were rather splendid. Uh, he told the girls about his job as Speaker of the House. And when we went into the debating chamber the next day to, he to hear our petition being read out, the girls were so excited. He was their special friend. Um, and they thought it was pretty hilarious when he told <clears throat> Jerry Brownlee to behave himself. They said he sounded just like me. So just before, this was not the end, <laughs> Just before the end of the year, we had an email from the Environment Committee saying that they were going to consider the petition and did we have evidence to back it up. So we had to quickly get all that together and send it off. And then last week, um, we had another email saying uh, public hearings were back on under um, Level 1 and we would like to make an oral submission. So that has been a bit of a scramble as well, but pretty cool that we can follow the process right to the end. So tomorrow morning we have a Zoom meeting with the committee, the whole class, or the girls that are left from last year, and 15 minutes to persuade them to change the world. And that's basically it. Um, it was, it wasn't hard. It kind of took on a life of its own. Um, and we had fantastic parent and community support. I will just finish. Oh, stop share. Here we go. Okay, I'm back. 
Thanks it's so much, funny. Helen. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was that was great. A, a, a story of persistence and um, yeah, I, I love the way in which you um, brought together all of the different um, uh, strands, and I also like the way that you brought in um, so much literacy and so on and so forth. And um, I'm just um, wanting now to open the session up for questioning. So. If anybody's got any questions or comments or feedback, um, please, are you quite happy to receive it, um, Helen? Sure, as long as I know the answers. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll That's see. Always a worry. <laughs> yeah, I'll do the best I can. So who'd like to kick off? Don't, don't forget to unmute your uh, microphone, otherwise we can't hear you. And by the way, welcome, Jen. Apologies for being late. Hi, my name's Karen. I just wanted to know how long the project was. Was it, you know, three terms, four terms, <laughs> whatever? How long did it take from start to finish? Uh, well, we started thinking about it at the beginning of the year, but I had a, um, I had a student teacher for the first six weeks of term, so we didn't really get started probably until term two. Okay. But then it, 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 it took the rest of the year. Yes. You know, so it wasn't a rush. I mean, we took our time and tried to do everything as best we could. So I wouldn't recommend doing it in a rush. Yeah. 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 Thank you. And it's still going on too, isn't it? It is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Come back to haunt me. <laughs> One of these things with a life of its own. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, um, Alan, um, Sharon here. Um, just... To start your, to start it all off, was the interest of mudfish, did that come from a knowledge of what was already in the environment? Or how did you, how did you start on the idea of mudfish? What was the starting point to get onto the mudfish? Or was it an interest of your own that you were able to share? Or how did that all start at the beginning? Um, well, no, we knew nothing about mudfish. Um, uh, you know, it started, we were going to do um, sort of all of the freshwater, native freshwater fish, but that was kind of really big. We started looking at, at that. And then um, <clears throat> one of the girls was doing galaxids, which is one of the species, and found um, the mudfish in there, and then found a reference to black mudfish in, in Hikurangi. And we just kind of seized on that and thought, well, this is, these are our fish. You know, the Hikurangi swamp used to be the biggest swamp, area of swamp land in the Southern Hemisphere. So, you know, it's, it's pretty significant. And, and um, the Waikaka was, was fairly or very significant, you know, to local iwi and um, which, you know, these girls. Thank you. Thanks. We found oh, it, was, it was more relevant. They're not the cutest fish in the world. But, no, they're but worth I said, saving. <laughs> I, I suppose you've got a life's work if you're going to do all of them over your rest of your lifetime. <laughs> No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Helen, it's Jen here. How did you? Hi, Jen. How, um, I've just realised I'm just sitting here in my dressing gown, so I've turned the video off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really need to see my fluffy dressing gown. Um, uh, how did you sustain their energy and interest? How did you keep it going? How did you? You know, because that's sometimes, you know, people ask, how did you keep that going from term two right through? Um, well, we didn't, we didn't flog it. We didn't yeah. do it all the time. I made sure, you know, we had other stuff on as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think um, what helped to sustain it as well was the amount of uh, <laughs> fundraising we had to do to get to Wellington. So, yeah. you know, we always had that Wellington trip at the end of it um but i don't know you know they just really got into it and having the um having visits from experts and um sort of a fair bit of media coverage you know, helped that as well 
but you know i think the secret is not to just you know every minute of the day be doing it yeah if they lost interest would you have let that happen or would you have tried to re-engage them um once we'd made the commitment to do it i think i would have done my best to re-engage them yeah 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 and how, were they um, reasonably self-sustaining or was it really hard work to keep them engaged? Uh, no, no, they, they weren't too bad. I mean, you know, when, when initially when we were doing lots of literacy learning and we had to go, like, dial back to the whole, you know, finding keywords and, you know, finding out whether the research was robust enough and things like that. There were probably moments when they thought, oh, I got sick yeah. of it. But I kind of um, spent a lot of time divvying it up and they worked in pairs. So, um, you know, they didn't have to do the whole lot themselves. Yeah, yeah. Good. Mm. 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 Uh, hi, it's David here. Got it. Um, I just have a, a, a sort of a question, uh, just, just to get the timeline sort of straight in my head. Um, when you were, were sort of looking at this, did you always have as a, as a sort of an outcome the, the trip to Wellington? Or at, at what point in the process did you and or your class sort of realise that you would be looking to pe petition Parliament? Uh, not initially. Um, but we had a we had a discussion in class near the beginning, um, and we kind of said, "Well, you know, how are we going to how are we going to do this? How are we going to approach it? What 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 is our you know what is our aim, our focus?" And they said, "Oh," and we kind of um, we decided we'd do a petition, okay, and then we just sort of said, "Well, you know, if we're going to petition the government, why don't we go down there?" And they all went, yay! Let's go. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, that, that, I, I, I was just so, so some of the, the, I guess, the motivation and the determination to do sort of the level of, of, of learning that they did was because they were going to be presenting that, that petition. Would that be right? Yes. Yeah, I would say so. And, you know, getting Willow Jean down quite early um, sort of, got them going on that. She gave us lots of resources about Parliament mm. and the process and everything. And um, I don't know, I think they also got quite um, caught up in the fact that, you know, and hardly anybody knew about them. You know, I don't, we, when we went to Wellington, we went to, um, we went to Papa and had a guided tour and everything. And um, they had the big war with all the endemic um, um, animals and there were no freshwater fish there. And they kind of said, hey, you know, where's our freshwater fish? And we kind of <laughs> hunted around and where's our mudfish? And the guy said, oh, I don't know what you're talking about, really. And so we hunted around and we found a mudfish in a, in a drawer, but it had no information attached to it. And even when we went to Zealandia and we we're talking to, you know, we, the lady there, she, I mean, she said, I didn't know anything about mudfish before you guys came. So there was that kind of ownership of it, you know, all of a sudden they knew more about, uh, mm -hmm. about mudfish mm -hmm. than lots of other people. So that kind of kept it going as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, it, through this process, what have you personally gained from it? <laughs> Grey hair. hair. <laughs> Grey hair, yeah. <laughs> no. Um, what have I gained? I've, I've kind of learned that it's, you know, it's not hard. Mm. And, um, and it's really, it means something, you know, to, to the girls. And, you know, um, <clears throat> we're a small rural school, you know, quite low decile. And, um, you know, I just want these girls to know that they mean something, you know, they have a voice and and they can do stuff, you know, they can change the world. So, so that's the kind of thing 
I've got out of it seeing their confidence grow through the year. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, 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 would I do it again? Yeah, I'd do it again. But um, because, you know, as long as you've got backing behind you, as long as you've got people to call on, and we found all the scientists were more than happy to share their knowledge. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was fun. You know, it was fun. Good. It, well, it really was. We had a great trip. Yeah, it was very <laughs> good. <clears throat> Um, Helen, what happens, they, they're talking to the um, committee tomorrow, are they prepared for it to go nowhere? I mean, I don't mean to sound negative, but... No, they're not. You no, know, because there is, there is the power, I mean, it could in fact be, they could be very influential. H have you prepared them for also the, pro of the process that sometimes, despite your best efforts, you don't get it over the, um, the sort of the... the um, the finish line? Um, not explicitly, I don't think. I mean, we've talked about it and I've kind of, and you know, we've sort of, well, you know, we can save the world and things like this. The girls are really resilient. Mm. Um, I've been impressed with the, with the way they've taken everything in their stride. Um, the whole, you know, the, the media and the, the Wellington trip and the, and the politicians and things like that. Um, so I haven't explicitly prepared them, uh, for failure, <laughs> but, um, we, if, if it happens, we'll talk about it, I guess. Yeah. That, that, you know, we have talked about how long it took women to get suffrage, you know, mm. that it didn't happen the first time. So, so yeah. I guess I can go back to that. Yeah. And maybe the thing is, they are resilient and they will just see that as what happens sometimes and it won't stop them from trying again. You know what I mean? Maybe yeah. we undersell their ability to just manage it and get on with life, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And maybe we'll, we'll nag Parliament again, you know? Yes. Nice. Why not? Mm. Oh, so good. Uh, have we got any more uh, questions or comments before we wind up? Well, Helen, I'd like to thank you very much for this. Um, you've given, certainly given me food for thought and I'm going to review the um, video when we get it. Um, thanks a lot and thanks everybody for turning up and uh, Good luck tomorrow with your... Oh, um, yes. Let us yeah, know what happens. Yeah, let us know what happens. It's, um, I think they, they stream it live on their Facebook page. Oh, no. So, <laughs> Who do? The, the, um, the Environment Committee. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, what are what um, you talking to them? So, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. It's been, really, it's been a really quick turnaround. Um, but... Um, the girls have been practicing hard out today, so hopefully it'll go okay. They know what they're talking about, you know, and that's what I've said to them. If you know what you're talking about, it's easy to talk about it. So, right, yeah, we'll see. Okay, well, thanks a lot. Um, you're welcome. Are we okay to finish?